Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Holy shit, I'm so glad to see everybody. So really quickly, um, before I get into this uh, review, I'm just going to state that I was gone for a few days uh, because I actually went to a Pup the Band show. I uh, got a little bit banged up, so... <laughs> Got some back issues going on, uh, might have, might have pulled something a few places, so, feel a little bit rusty, but, oh my god, boy, have I missed doing reviews, and boy, oh boy, was I looking forward to this movie. So, I'm gonna be sitting down, thing a little crooked, so I'm gonna be sitting down talking about Robert Eggers' new film, The Northman. Oh boy, I hope you guys' uh, seats in the theater got seat belts. Because you're going to need them. So, The Northman is the newest film from Robert Eggers. It is his first uh, directorial effort that drifts away from the A24 formula. Uh, you will know him from films like The Witch as well as The Lighthouse, which in my opinion are both good movies. And he is an acclaimed uh, director. Both The Lighthouse as well as The Witch have been very successful films, both critically and financially. And I want to say that The Witch is actually like A24's like like, like, if not their biggest uh, grossing film, like, one of them kind of, like, what put it out on the map. So, uh, Robert Eggers has a lot of uh, notice from these two films. And going into uh, his third film, The Northman, which is actually from Focus Features, there was, of course, so much hype. So, this is, uh, again, drifting away from his normal formula with uh, horror. He's actually tackling uh, Viking lore in this film. So the Northmen centers on a young boy named Prince Amleth. He is the son of a king played by Ethan Hawke, who is the ruler of a kingdom. And uh, one thing I'm going to say about this film is that it's very brief in its uh, opening. Uh, it gives you just enough to kind of know about these characters, to kind of attach to them just enough to really set things in motion. And I want to say that it's a lot different from Eggers' normal material. So, The Lighthouse and The Witch are both um, pretty uh, pretty slow burn movies. They definitely take their time and are, weirdly enough, much shorter than The Northman. <laughs> but this film kind of starts right off the bat. And this is uh, no spoiler content, but Prince Amleth's father is killed by the little boy's uncle Fjolnir and destroys the kingdom as well as uh, kidnapping the boy's mother. So we fast forward uh, 20 years later and we see uh, Amleth, now a grown man, who is on a quest to avenge his father, save his mother, and kill his uncle. So like a lot of uh, Eggers' material, if you don't know the lore, you're probably going to be a little bit stuck, which I was personally. Um, both of his films, The Witch as well as The Lighthouse, have a lot of depth and uh, mythology and lore to them, and they tend to lose a lot of people, and this one is absolutely no exception. This one, he goes hardcore into Viking uh, lore, and there is a lot of uh, content and imagery as well as subliminal themes in this film that a lot of people are going to be a little bit stuck with if they are really not down with the whole Viking lore, which again, I wasn't, but hey, a revenge Viking flick directed by Robert Eggers. I'm not going to miss it. So I'm not going to talk too much about the actual depth of the film and actually how far it goes to and what it all contains, but more so what I want to share from the film that I got out of it. So immediately from the get-go, this is an absolutely visually pleasing film. I actually think it might be uh, the highest as far as like visuals go for Robert Eggers. I thought The Witch and The Lighthouse were both obviously, you know, beautiful sets, beautiful cinematography, beautiful atmosphere, and this one is absolutely up there and probably exceeds a little bit more because of the higher budget as well as the different locations and as well as the dif different uh, cinematography uses that he uses throughout the movie. There is a lot of different jump cuts to different scenery and different imagery that is Definitely a little bit different for Robert Eggers' case, which kind of threw me off somewhat. But it was just one beautiful visual take after another. It's one of those films that, you know, I, I, I don't like saying this because it gets very tossed around and everything, but this really is a movie that you want to see in a theater. 
this is a movie that if you do enjoy the film, you're going to want to buy it on 4K on your 4K TV and watch it. <laughs> um, this is its highest budget yet, so it exceeds from what The Witch and Lighthouse was actually capable of and what he could actually put into this. Um, I actually heard that with this film, he actually put everything he wanted into it. Every little piece of info or content that he wanted to make and you know craft in his vision, he was able to do so. From what he has been saying as well, this is actually in his eyes his best film he's ever made so far. So there's a lot of hype onto this. There's a lot of display that needs to be acknowledged as well. And next I'm going to talk about the performances. Um, Pretty much every performance in this film was very good. My favorites personally were Skarsgård, Anya Taylor-Joy, Ethan Hawke. I thought they absolutely crushed it. And again, uh, you know, Willem Dafoe, Bjork are in this movie. They did phenomenal as well. Nicole Kidman, they all did very good. Um, I think that, a, like, one thing I was a little bit disappointed on is that a lot of the characters I was really excited for to see, uh, while they did, you know, get enough to do with each role, and, you know, even if it was for a few moments here and there, I think that they really took full advantage of. Um, I feel like, you know, we could have used more. Again, this is a pretty lengthy movie, and with uh, how we're kind of used to Robert Eggers' uh, fashion of, like, you know, building up things and really kind of taking that slow route. He does not do that here. And with a movie this long, with as interesting as, you know, of a cast and as well as the characters themselves, it kind of, you know, threw me off and rubbed me a little bit the wrong way that we were only able to get so minimal in such a great cast at times. And the next thing I'm going to move on to is the stunt as well as the violence. Epic. Oh my god. Oh my god. Now, I, I didn't know how, you know... A Robert Eggers Viking flick would turn out. It was just kind of like, oh, well, I've seen how far he goes in the, in the Witch and where he's gone in the lighthouse. And I'm, you know, yeah. I was, I was one of those people that's like, look, this is going to be his biggest film yet. He's drifting away. He's getting a big budget, going on away from the A24 formula, going out of focus features, able to put everything out of his being into this. And he's going to make it what he wants. I was I was scared, man. I was like, what, what am I, what am I <laughs> getting in the in, in for? What am I in for? And I'm gonna say that really quickly. This movie has some brutality. Um, it is not as soul crushing or as like you know disturbing as a lot of people I think are gonna think. They're gonna think, well, it's a revenge tale with Viking lore from Robert Eggers. This movie is gonna fucking traumatize you. And you know he definitely, I think, plays it a little bit safe in the R rating. Uh, not that, like, he tones it down, but I think it's just where it should be. There is some memorable, you know, deaths. There's some memorable, memorable moments that are very uncomfortable. But one thing I want to mention and uh, really talk about and kind of bring to the surface really quick is that he's not doing this, you know, for, you know, reactions. He's not doing this to push any limits. He's doing this for the sake of what, you know, went in into those times and what he you know, really thinks in his uh, fashion and his craft is appropriate for the film and for its, you know, setting. So, really quickly, I, 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 you know, yes, there is brutality in this film. It is definitely violent. It's intense. But it is, I don't think it's quite something that, you know, is really going to turn people away. So, but in saying that, you know, the stunts, the, uh, you know, choreography with that as well as the violence itself is absolutely just sights to see. They really do go to a very professional and mature route with it. They really do, you know, expand on it just enough to really make it definitely a sight to see. So that's one thing I really wanted, wanted to talk about is that when the action and violence is actually occurring, I was just blown away, just blown away. Like, all I can say is that what you would expect out of Robert Eggers directing that kind of a manner, you know, the, the Vikings, you know, taking down villages and, you know, going after the uh, fielder uncle and, you know, just crushing things in their path and going from village to village. It really, he really does this justice. It is, again, it's very uneasy. It's not enough to really turn you away, but it's enough to really kind of dig in you and really put that, uh, that setting in you. So... I thought he did phenomenal with that, just just phenomenal. Another thing I want to talk about, which I, I, I kind of caught me off guard as well, is the score. I mean, 
Oh my god, dude, he's, we, we got didgeridoos and fucking bagpipes in this score. Uh, it was, it was definitely what I would expect out of this film's score. And, you know, with Robert Eggers in control of that, just great stuff to listen to, great stuff. I don't know if it was, you know, as big as a score as, you know, we got in the fucking Batman, but holy shit, dude, we got didgeridoos. And one thing I'm, uh, I also gonna talk about that was more of a negative aspect for me was, uh, the witchery aspect. There was a lot of, again, subliminal imagery and, uh, you know, jump cuts to different filmmaking techniques and, you know, different things that just kind of drift away from the actual story and go to these little side kind of, uh, I guess you can say interludes in some way, which I don't think are obviously, you know, unnecessary. I, I trust Robert Eggers. Look, I love The Witch in the White House. I still don't fucking understand those things. I'm like, dude, whatever uh, Robert Eggers puts in this film, I trust that it's accurate. And, you know, again, uh, you know, as someone who wasn't really fully aware of the lore, there is, you know, a moment or two or three or five where, you know, it does go to these different, you know, jump cuts, you know, again, things of, you know, witchcraft and, you know, uh, Valkyrie characters and these things that, you know, if you really don't know this lore, it's just going to throw you off. Not because it is such a different transition, but because it jumps away from the story with these uh, moments throughout the entire film. And, you know, as someone who, you know, liked The Lighthouse and The Witch, who enjoyed those, you know, there's so much in the depth of it that, you know, you need to really pull out and really analyze, really need to be aware of. And he does that with this uh, film. And I think that that was kind of like a negative aspect for me. I don't think that, you know, it was unnecessary again. I think he could have maybe done it in a different way, um, especially just coming from the filming techniques. Again, he does a lot of uh, cinematography that he hasn't done yet in really any of his, uh, you know, career so far. He does a lot of new things here. He goes a lot of different routes that a lot of people wouldn't expect out of Robert Eggers that I think he's kind of, you know, playing around with, with this new budget and everything and really being able to be in control of this film. So, again, I'm not, you know, talking down on it. I just think that Personally, it wasn't for me. You know, it's it's definitely something that kind of got in the way and was a little bit of a distraction. And you know, I don't I don't think that it really, you know, like like the White House and the Witch. Uh, there's things that you know you might need to watch a few times, but if you really kind of pay attention enough, it kind of speaks for itself. Where this one, it really just kind of takes things a whole different route many times, which again just kind of threw me off. Other than that, I think the film was you know definitely enjoyable. Uh, the performances, the set. The finale, oh my god. And th just pretty much everything was, in the very least, like, yeah, this is fine. We're good. We're good. You know, there's tons of phenomenal stuff. There was, you know, a good amount where I was a little bit lost with, a little bit stuck with, that, you know, I feel like I could have done without. But, you know, with all that combined in the rest of the film, I think overall it is a good piece. Um, again, for the finale, which I'm not absolutely not going to talk about, uh-uh, you're going to have to see the movie and it's worth it. Um, I feel like, the, again, going kind of going back to earlier, like they did just enough to, you know, make it impactful. You know, I feel like, I feel like you know, maybe some things could have gone on a little bit longer or, you know, there could have been, you know, a little bit different approach and things maybe have kind of, you know, were fastballed a little bit too quickly. But I think that in the actual ending result of most things, he did at the very least fine. So overall, guys, I'm going to give The Northman a 6.2 with an overall score of 3 out of 5. I don't think that this is his best film. Uh, I still personally think that his best film yet is The Witch. And I know that as far as reviews goes, this, you know, by no means is a negative, you know, film or a negative review for me. But it is a little bit lower on his, uh, you know, scale. And I think that that is just because of the different things that he was actually trying. And I really think that, you know, as this filmmaker goes on, he's going to really keep getting, uh, you know, trying new things and really going to limits and will keep giving us, you know, for the most part, pretty surprising results. So I will still be standing by Robert Eggers and I still recommend this film. So yes, guys, that is going to do it for my review on The Northmen. I'm very glad I got to see this one. Um, it is definitely one of the better films I've seen this year. So far, it is up there in my favorites. You know, of the bunch that's actually coming out this weekend, this one along with Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, and The Bad Guys, this is the one I was most excited for. It was one of my most anticipated films of the year as well. And I can't say that I was really disappointed. 
You know, I, I kind of, for the most part, I think I got what I, you know, was kind of expecting out of this film. You know, I, I've seen Robert Eggers' films. I wasn't expecting to get the whole fucking thing. I was expecting to be stuck a little bit. But those times that I was not stuck, I was really enjoying myself. And, you know, again, you know, I think that because he is trying different things this time around, things could have gone a little bit different of routes and, you know, maybe rubbed, you know, some audiences the wrong way. But, but I do think that he did, for the most part, pretty good with this one. So let me know what you guys thought of The Northman. Let me know what you guys would rank Robert Eggers' films. Again, this is my least favorite of his films, but I think the man has yet to make a bad film. So, but thank you guys for watching the review. Um, let me know if you guys check out the movie what you think. Again, I do recommend it, and, you know, I'm glad I, glad I watched this one. So take care, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video, and have a good rest of your night. I'll see you in the next review.